Google Drive is great. It will store everything that you could possibly want, especially if you're on an educational account because it's unlimited. But once you get inside of Google Drive, it can get a little bit confusing. So we're gonna talk about three things. We're gonna talk about my drive, shared drive, and shared with me. So how is Google Drive different from the rest? Well, Google Drive is your place to store anything that you want and only you can access it. So think of it like a thumb drive or an external hard drive or even your computer's hard drive, but it is a drive that's in the cloud. So everything that you save there can be accessed from any other device that you have as long as you're signed in with Chrome. You are the only person that has access to this drive unless something inside of it you decide to share. In order to share a file, you would go to a file, you could right click on it, or you could go to the upper right corner where the person with the plus sign is and say share. And then you could go ahead and type in their email address. You could also get a link if you wanted to, to be able to send out through email. And you can change the different restrictions if you like. So you can make it restricted to anyone that's in your organization, or you can make it so anyone with that link is able to open it and collaborate on that document. Now, let's talk about when things are shared with you. The shared with me section of Google Drive is where other people or professionals can share files with you. This normally comes through email when they share it. Anything that is shared is going to show up in the shared with me section. One thing that I always talk about is this cannot be organized. And I feel that that's one of the reasons Google introduced priority into their lineup here inside of Google Drive. I use priority quite a bit to go ahead and link to things that I need to find that people have shared with me. So inside of shared with me, I utilize the search in drive function quite a bit to find files that are shared, but I can't organize. And then for priority, I go ahead and put those links into a workspace. So if I find something that I like, the escape the room activity that is here, I can right click on it. I can then go to add to workspace, and then I can put it in any of the workspaces that I have here or create a new workspace. Now in my priority, you will see that OCMBOSI shows up and escape the room that Randy Down shared with me is there. So how are these two things, my drive and shared with me, how is that different than shared drives? Shared drives can get a little bit complicated, so let's go over that right now. When you go into shared drives, you will see maybe you have one already shared with you. Maybe you're a part of it. What you have to know about a shared drive is that anything that is put into a shared drive is owned by the drive. There are no owners of documents. There are creators and people that have started that document and put it into a shared drive, but the drive itself is the owner of the content. So this makes it difficult when you want to go ahead and keep it for yourself or keep a copy for yourself. But on the flip side, it's really good if a collaborator that you've been working with is retiring or is resigning from their position. All of the work that has already been done isn't lost. When you set up a shared drive, I'm going to go into Virtual Classroom Fun. This is a drive that I set up for different members of a team and I can manage these members. So the same way that we share a document, we can manage members of our shared drive by just adding an email address. And then at that point, you can go ahead and change who the person is and what their level of access is going to be. You can see they can be a viewer, a commenter, a contributor. Contributors can add and edit files. They, are, they could be a content manager where they can add, edit, move, and delete files or they could be the actual manager. So you can give up your rights as manager. Once you've added your members, you can then click done. Whoever is inside the drive and whoever you are giving that access to, they are gonna have access as much as you provide it through the manage members button up top. Shared drives are great because everyone has one place then to go and knows that all the information that they may be looking for is in that one shared drive. This is great 
for collaboration between team members. It's also great for collaboration between content area teachers that are teaching the same subject and same grade level of content. Just think, if you have great collaboration with other teachers and you're willing to share content, it's going to make things so much easier for you in the long run. One of the downfalls of a shared drive is that you can't assign content directly from a shared drive. This is where you would have to make a copy of it and put it into your own drive. In order to do that, you could go to any of the ones that you have and you could click make a copy. Once you have your copy, I'm going to rename it and then I'm able to take it out of our shared drive. I'm going to do this by right clicking. I'm going to then go to move to and I'm just going to back out of our shared drives and go into my drive. From here, I could pick a folder or just go ahead and put it in the general files section of my drive. So I'm going to click move here. This comes up, it says make yourself the new owner. Because I put a file, or because I made a copy, I should say, of that file inside of the shared drive, it's going to take any rights that it has from everyone else, and that's okay because it was a copy. So I'm gonna click on the blue button that says move. So the bottom line with shared drives is remember that the drive is what owns the material. When you put something in there, ownership has been lost, and everyone else is going to be able to collaborate or use or view what it is that's in that folder. In order to take ownership back, make a copy of it, and then put it back into your drive.